This weekend, I spent a little bit of time designing out this new card look. I wanted to make it kind of interactive on Hover, so I went through and made a few decisions. First of all, I wanted the background image to blow up and get bigger when you hovered on top of it. I also wanted the overlay on top of the image to darken. I wanted this arrow to fade and slide in from the left, and I wanted this yellow accent to fade and slide in from the right. So I jumped in to generate blocks and started setting all this up. But what I came to find out is there's a version we could pull off in the builder with no additional CSS. There's a little bit nicer of a version we can do if we're willing to write a little bit of CSS, but ultimately, if we want it to do all the things I envisioned inside my Figma file, we're gonna have to do almost all of this with CSS. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can set up all three different versions here, depending on how much extra work you want to put into it. As you can see, the third option that's mostly CSS does look a whole lot nicer, but is it really worth going to all that extra trouble? Well, if you're interested in finding out, stick around and let's dive in. All right, so we're gonna start here in a completely blank page and I'm gonna add a new section. Inside of that, we'll go ahead and do a three column grid with a little bit of gap in between it. And we're gonna delete the extra column since we're just gonna start out by focusing on one. Now this first version, we're gonna do everything we can inside the builder. So let's go ahead and scroll down here to add our background image. We'll go to browse and we'll choose this mountain bike photo. We also wanna set a minimum height on this card because we want it to be at least 250 pixels tall. So I'll set this in the minimum height box. Here under the borders, I wanna change the border radius to eight pixels to round off those edges. And I wanna add an overlay on top of it. We can do that by scrolling back down here to the backgrounds, choosing the gradient, making sure we set this to pseudo element so our gradient is on top of the image. We'll change the direction to zero. We'll make the top color almost nearly black, maybe 0.8 and we'll change the bottom color to completely transparent. Now we can see this overlay is actually affecting our border radius here. So I'm gonna go back to this card, scroll up to the top and set our overflow on both the X and the Y to hidden. So now we have the basics of our card set up with the background image and overlay. Now we just need to get the text and the arrow in place. So inside here, I'm gonna actually add a container that's gonna house both our text and our arrow. In here, I'll add a headline. An H2 is gonna be fine for this demonstration. And we'll type in the word mountain bikes. I'm gonna use one of my global styles here just to make it a bit smaller. And I'm gonna go ahead and transform this to be uppercase letters. We'll make sure that it has a zero bottom margin and we'll change the text color to white. Now let's go back to our original card here and let's change the layout from the default to flex. We'll change the direction to column, and we're gonna set the justify content to flex end. This is gonna put our container with all of our text and arrow inside it down at the bottom of the card. Now you can see our overlay is actually going over the text. So I'm gonna grab our container that houses the text and which will house our arrow here in a second. And I'm gonna go ahead and change this Z index to five just to bring it in front of the overlay. Now we don't want the text and the arrow to be right butted up against the corner of the card here. So I'm gonna go back to our card and we'll go to our spacing settings and for padding, I'm gonna lock in all the values and do 16 pixels. Okay, back in here in this container, I'm gonna go ahead and add an image. We'll go to our media library and grab this arrow, which I've already uploaded. Back to our container and we'll change its display from default to flex. So these two items can go next to each other. Now we want the arrow to be pushed all the way to the right. So on that container, I'm gonna change the justify content to space between, which will make sure that it pushes the first item all the way to the left and the last item all the way to the right. We'll go ahead and save this and we'll start working on making this card a little bit more interactive. To do that, I'm gonna need to add a class to this arrow. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this image, go to advanced and we'll call this MTB arrow. Back here on the container wrapping the card, I'm gonna scroll down here until we get to the effects panel. Under the effects, I know I'm gonna need an opacity, I'm gonna need a transition, and I'm gonna need a transform. We're gonna save the opacity to last because it's gonna be hard to see things once we make them 0% opacity. So first, I'm gonna to go to the transform and add a transform. The type, we're gonna choose translate, and we're gonna be translating the X 
negative 50 pixels. Now you can see it moved the whole card, but actually what we want to target is not the self, not the card itself, is a custom selector. This is why we gave that arrow a class. So we'll do dot MTB hyphen arrow. We can see now this translate is affecting the arrow and not the entire card. So by default, we want this translated negative 50 pixels, and we want to add another transform, change the translate to zero when we hover. So we're going to change this to hover, and we're going to target the custom selector again and do dot MTB arrow. So if we close this now, we'll see when we hover over the card, the arrow jumps over to the right, which is exactly what we're wanting. Of course, that's a little abrupt, and that's why we added the transition here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this effect. We'll target the custom selector. This is gonna be MTB arrow. We can use ease as fine, and we can change the transition duration to 0.25 seconds. Go ahead and close that again and test it out. And we see now the arrow smoothly scrolls over to the right when we hover over the card. But we actually don't want the arrow to be there in the first place. We only want the arrow to show up when the card is hovered on. So let's go back onto the card, go into our effects, and open up the opacity and blend. We're going to add a effect here, and we're going to change this target to MTB arrow. Here we want the opacity to be zero. You can see it's completely faded out that arrow and we can add our second effect here, which is gonna happen on hover. We're gonna do a custom selector again, dot MTB arrow. Now we can see when we hover, it goes from 0% opacity to 100%. Go ahead and save this again and let's go ahead and take a look on the front end. Here we have our card with the word mountain bikes. It's got the nice overlay on it. And when we hover over it, the arrow slides in from the left and goes from 0% opacity to 100% opacity. This is a good looking card, though ultimately it's not everything I wanted in this card. Unfortunately, due to some of the limitations inside the builder, that's all we're gonna be able to accomplish in this design without writing some CSS. So let's go ahead and move to step two now, where we make this card look quite a bit better with just a little bit of CSS. To do this, we're gonna go back into the builder. We're gonna grab the container for our card and we're gonna give it a class as well so we can target it. We'll just call this MTB card. Go ahead and update again. And we'll go in here to the customizer and to additional CSS so we can write a little bit of CSS. What we're gonna to wanna to do is create a pseudo element for the little yellow decoration that goes in the corner. To do that, I'm gonna do MTB hyphen card and I'm gonna do double colon and write before. This is gonna create our pseudo element. So here for the pseudo element, we want to position it absolute. We wanna make sure we give it a blank content declaration, and then we can start sizing this up and decorating it. So here, let's just say a width of 50 pixels. We'll do an aspect ratio of one over one. This is just make sure it's a perfect square and we only have one value to change if we end up needing to change the size. We'll do a bottom position of zero pixels, a right position of zero pixels. And lastly, we can do a background color of yellow. Now you can see this little yellow box has showed up down here in the bottom right corner. Now it's actually behind our overlay, so we need to add a Z index of one to bring it in front. That yellow is a little bit too bright, so I'm gonna go ahead and just use the tab yellow color, which I know by heart. So now we can see this yellow box is in there. Now I don't think it's sized quite perfectly. So I'm gonna go back here and change this to maybe 55 pixels. And I think that looks a little bit more proportionate. Lastly, I did have a slightly rounded corner on this top left corner. So I'm gonna do border top left radius and we'll do four pixels. So that looks pretty good, but just like the arrow, we want this yellow box to be off the screen when the card is not being hovered, and we want it to fade and slide in when it is. So to do that, I'm gonna add a transform, and I'm gonna translate the X, which is the left and right, by 55 pixels. This will just move it its full width, since we have 55 pixels here, it's gonna move it its full width off the edge of the card. You can see if we just did 50 pixels, it's only moved it over 50 pixels, so not quite all the way. So we can go ahead and do 55. We also want to go ahead and set an opacity of zero, so it starts off completely transparent. Now we can go ahead and go to MTB card and hover, 
and we want to target the MTB card before. So this is just make sure the rules we're writing now will only happen when we hover on top of the card. So the things we want to change are we want to change the transform back to translate X of zero pixels, and we want to change the opacity to one. So now when we hover over the card, it is sliding in from the right and going from zero to one in opacity, but it's doing it instantly because we haven't set up any kind of transition. So to add that transition, we'll do transition all 250 milliseconds, which is gonna match the ones we did inside the builder. And the timing function is gonna be ease since that's also what we did inside the builder. So now with the transition in place, when we hover over it, you can see it actually fade and slide in. So really, this isn't a whole lot of CSS to write, and this looks quite a bit better than it did before. But we still haven't got this exactly where we want it. In our original concept in Figma, we wanted the background image to get bigger, and we wanted the overlay to get darker. So to do that, we're actually going to have to change the way this is set up inside the builder and write a little bit more CSS. Because we're unable to transition a gradient here for this overlay, we're gonna go ahead and get rid of the overlay here inside the builder so we can set it up a little bit differently with CSS. So I'm just gonna go back on this card and under use gradient, I'm just gonna to toggle that off. Additionally, to get the background image to grow, we actually can't set this as a background image to the card. We're gonna to have to put an actual image in the DOM. So I'm gonna go back here to this card and under backgrounds, I'm just gonna delete out that background image. Here inside that container, I'll just add the image back by adding an image block. We'll go to our media library and select that image again. Now we can see the image is in here, but unfortunately it's just underneath our text and not in the background. To fix that, we're actually gonna to have to write CSS. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this image a class of MTB image and we can update this page and go back into the customizer. We'll refresh here so we have the updated version and we can start writing our CSS. Now, just to make this a little bit easier to see since some things look like they've disappeared off the screen, I'm just gonna do MTB card and we'll do an outline one pixel solid so you can see where it is on the screen. So the first thing we wanna do is position our image so it acts as if it's a background image even though it's an image block. So to do that, we're gonna target our MTB hyphen image, and we're gonna do a position of absolute. Now we'll do a top of zero, a left of zero, a width of 100%, and a height of 100%. Now you can see it's actually squished our image quite a bit. So to fix that, we'll do an object fit of cover. Now that fixes the proportions of the image, and we can go ahead and get rid of our outline here. Now we need to go back and add our image overlay. So to do that, I'm gonna do a .mtb hyphen card. And since we already used our before pseudo element for our little yellow accent, here I'm gonna use our after pseudo element. Again, we'll have to do a position of absolute. We're gonna do content that is blank. We'll do a width of 100%, a height of 100%, and we can do inset of zero, which sets all of the positions to zero. Lastly, let's just do a background here of black just to make sure that it's working. So we can see that's working perfectly, but we need to get our gradient in there. I'm terrible at remembering how to do gradients, so I'm just gonna go to the cssgradient.io website and we'll grab this gradient that it generated here, which goes from total black to completely transparent. Instead of our background of black here, I'm just gonna paste that in. And we can see now it's giving us a smooth gradient from a dark black color to completely transparent. Essentially, at this point, we're just back to what we had in our second version, but we're set up now to be able to do everything we need to do for our third ultimate version where the background grows and the gradient gets darker. So to do that, we're gonna to have to pull off a couple tricks. First of all, like I said earlier, you're not able to transition a background linear gradient, so we're gonna have to trick this out a little bit. What I like to do for situations like this is change the height from 100% to something like 150%. You can see that change the overlay here because this is actually taking up 150% of the height now. Just to show you, I'm gonna go ahead and do MTB card and we'll do an overflow of visible and you can see now the height of this overlay is actually 150%. I'm 
We could change it to something like 125% and it's quite a bit smaller. We'll go ahead and get rid of that so we're not dealing with the overflow issue now. And we can make this look as if it's getting darker on hover by targeting our MTB card hover and then our MTB card after. So what we want to do is when somebody hovers on this, we want to change the height from 125% back to 100%. So you can see when we hover on it now, it gets darker. It's just doing it instantly. So we need to go and add a transition. So here back on the after pseudo element, we're going to add a transition. We'll just make this match all the other ones we did. So we'll say all 250 milliseconds ease. So now you can see when we hover over it, it gets darker, but it follows a nice transition of everything else on the page. The last thing we need to tackle is this image. So let's go ahead and do that next. So to do that, I'm going to target the MTB card on hover and we'll target the MTB image. To make it bigger, what I'm actually going to use is a transform property called scale. So we'll do transform scale and inside our parentheses, we'll start with maybe 1.1. So now when we hover over the card, we can see the image has grown. Of course, again, this is doing it without any kind of transition. So we'll go back to our MTB image and we'll add a matching transition. So transition all 250 milliseconds ease. So now when we hover over it, we have that nice matching transition as the image gets bigger. This did take quite a bit more CSS to set up, but we went from our original design, which was a little bit boring to this one, which does so many more things. I thought this was actually a pretty good example of the power of learning a little bit more CSS. Nothing we did in here was extremely complicated, but it does take practice writing these different bits of CSS to get comfortable and know exactly what you're looking to do. Here, I showed you a really practical example of some things that the builder wouldn't allow us to do, but we could easily do with just a few lines of CSS. In my experience, I've learned a whole lot more about CSS by actually putting it into use and practicing it than I ever have sitting and watching videos. So if you learned something new in this video, I would really encourage you to go out and try to use it on a project soon, because that's going to do a great job of imprinting it in your brain and making sure you can recall it later. Now, I'll admit, I still have to go Google things all the time, just like when you saw me do the linear gradient. I never seem to remember how to do that, but almost all of these things are just a quick Google search away. But what's important is to know all the possibilities that are out there so you know what you can Google. If you learned something from this video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you want to make sure to catch the next one, go ahead and hit subscribe and we'll see you then.